All right, everyone, you're listening to KXSF 102.5 FM, San Francisco and KXSF.FM. I am Led Teddy, and I'm really excited to uh, have a guest today, uh, Jess Joy. They have a new album coming out on the 16th of April titled Patriarchy, and they also have a couple singles already out that I've been playing on the show, so perhaps you've heard them, but uh, really glad to have them talking with us today. Good morning. Good morning, Jess. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. Thanks so much for playing my stuff and asking me to come on here. Oh, yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure. Pleasure listening to it. And you're uh, you're hanging out in L.A. today. Is that correct? Yeah. Can you tell from the sunshine on my face? Yeah. Yeah. I could just feel it coming through the Zoom screen, you know, which is really, really nice because it's a little breezy up here in San Francisco. But, you know, we like we like it getting ready for our cold, cold summer. But, yeah, I haven't been really enjoying uh, mm -hmm. Both of the singles, let's see, uh, Bless Your Name and Threshold. Uh, but I want, I want to ask you a, a little bit first about your singing voice. How did you find that singing voice? Mm, yeah, well, I didn't know that. Uh, well, I mean, I just, I just didn't consider myself a singer as a child or as a young adult. And it really just happened that a couple of guys that I knew asked me to join their band when I was 20 uh -huh. and, and they were like, Hey, they were just so desperate. It was this like wild prog rock band called twin killers. And they were just asking everybody to sing for them. And it was just, the stuff was just so frenetic. Cause like, who could mm -hmm. do it? And, uh, they were like, can you sing? And I was like, no, <laughs> they're like, that's fine. Do you want to be in a band? And I was like, <laughs> I can't do that. Um, and so I, uh, I, I think I went home and I just was on MySpace. Uh huh. And I, was, I just was, you know, thinking. Rest in peace, MySpace, or is <laughs> rest in peace. If anyone knows if MySpace is still active, please get in touch with us. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I just thought, is there going to be another opportunity in my life where a rock band is going to ask me to join their band, and they don't even need me to be able to sing? I was, I just, I was like, I have to do it. So I just got my poetry and like went over and like tried out and just made these, just the best sounds that I thought I could make, which was apparently really awful. But the, the guitar <laughs> player was just like, that was so weird. You're, you're in, like you're in the band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a golden opportunity, right? No, uh, no audition, just, just get in there and, and get to it. Um, well, that's incredible. And now you have a solo career. <laughs> You know, you had your last band, Moon Honey, which uh, yes. toured pretty widely and released a lot of great music. And now you've gone from I don't sing to this is this is my solo project. Uh, how how does that feel? <laughs> how does that feel like uh, coming up on the release of your album? Oh, thanks for asking. I mean, it, it is so funny, isn't it, that we think that life is going to be a certain way. Like I thought I wanted to be a painter. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I'm just completely obsessed with, uh, this life music and performance Yeah. and a solo album is definitely something that I never, ever in my wildest dreams, I probably started dreaming about it when I was like 28 or something. Like, what would I, what would I sound like if I, if it was just me? Yeah. Um, I was like, but I can't do that. You know, I had so many virtuosic musicians in my band. And so yeah. I was really afraid. Um, so it feels amazing to like make my own music and just be like, I don't care, you know, put it out. Yeah. Well, and coming from a, a listener's point of view to hear the uh, clarity of your voice, both, uh, you know, in tone, but also lyrically, it is uh, really surprising to hear you say that, but that's okay because we're just excited about all the music. Um, I'm interested too in your background. Yeah. in visual arts and in painting one of the, when I was listening back to some of the moon honey stuff, uh, one of the albums is called Mixed Media on Woman, and the the artwork for uh, Patriarchy. I don't know if you would call it the artwork or the way you uh, the dress, like the character. Um, you can maybe tell us some more about it. It it also involves a, a lot of painting. Your your face is like heavily adorned in in paint, and it's very visually arresting do you want to talk a little bit about how you or how your visual arts background or your painting interest like sort of came into this project or this you know this part of your music world 
Oh, cool. Yeah. What a fantastic question that, or at least for me, um, I, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was painting and drawing. Uh, I was in, I was in art school kind of, it was LSU, Louisiana uh-huh. state university, <laughs> tiny little art department mm-hmm. when, when I joined the band. Um, and I was so interested in being in a band as well, because, you know, you travel, I can make all the artwork and the like t-shirts and posters and album designs and like videos. So, so it was really exciting to me because there is a visual and element, um, to it as well that I could be in control of. And a lot of those early album covers I did, I did paint myself and I felt like I was almost sort of, I don't know, hiding. These were the album covers for, uh, moon honey. Yes. All the album covers from moon honey. Oh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) so, yeah, when I was working on my solo project, I had started studying mime. I was taking mime, um, classes every day, like auditing a class at a nearby college. Oh, cool. And, um, and so the face paint is sort of a nod to pantomime. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marcel Marceau used to paint his face, but you know, what I was doing was more interdisciplinary and corporeal mm-hmm. mime, which is like a contemporary form of mime. And so when I was thinking about painting on my face, I wanted something that, that was, uh, a nod to like this, um, old theater Mm -hmm. art, but also, uh, its own, its own, uh, world, you know, contemporary world. And where did that, (laughs) where did that come into the process of recording this album? Was that some, were these things like parallel sort of, um, realizations you're like, Oh, this, this fits with that. I guess it came, you know, was already part of your process, you know, creatively in, in moon honey but do you feel like it reached a new place for you with this album or just kind of continuing to deepen that part of that part of the overall performance of this music cool yeah um it was certainly happening in tandem I think as I was in uh, practicing mime for three years and picking up a new art I was also writing uh this stuff yeah and I think that there was sort of a development of a character Mm -hmm. and, you know, there's not too many women in mime and I just sort of think about this person on the album cover as being, having this like extreme expression, Uh um, being like the, what, whatever it is to think of like a, like a housewife that's losing her mind in a way, like Uh this is, that's sort of what, how I think about that person. And I think when I put on my face paint and costume, I feel free to separate myself from who yeah. I am. And then this person who can say things that, that I normally wouldn't say in real life. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting that you bring up the uh, image of the housewife, uh, because I, one question I had for you uh, was what is a threshold? Okay. So that's the name of your one of your songs, but also, um, with, the with the album title, it's spelled a little bit differently. And this, uh, this song title, you know, is uh, spelled a little differently as well, you know, so there, maybe there is that idea of going over the, going through a doorway, perhaps, I don't know, maybe, I don't know if that occur- is a part of it or not, but I do, uh, yeah, I do like that stepping into character or in and out of character or back and forth through the door. Yeah, do you, could you talk a little bit about your, your use of spelling for uh, like the album title and tell us how it's spelled? Oh yeah, definitely. So, um, pa- my album is called Patriarchy and it's spelled T R E E like a tree. Mm-hmm. Um, and I chose that name because a good bit of the songs are the subject matter is sort of like the, the roots and the fruits of patriarchy of a, of a, you know, growing up in a country that's dominated by men, um, cis men. And, uh, I thought that like putting the tree in it made it sort of playful and less, uh, it is a serious thing, but it, it, it kind of opened the door for more comedy and, uh, lightheartedness around it. 
Yeah, and the video for Threshold, I believe, is uh, is a stop motion yes. video. Yeah, and so, yeah. Do you see Do you see that as um, a way to yeah open a conversation or keep that conversation going about changing all of all of the issues and and challenges that w we face in this country because of that patriarchy? Or yes. So Threshold, like you were saying. Yeah, it's a play on words, mm -hmm. thinking about a threshold, like a line and how when we're in this threshold, it takes all that energy to, to push in another direction, uh, or we find ourselves like sort of like thrashing around to, to get past something. Um, and so when I was making the video, it was all about binaries and that being like, a, um, sex binary of male and female or, um, uh, binary of good and evil, black and white black and white skin and, um, feeling enough anger basically mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. move past the line, which I think often is how the initial, you know, energy that gets change going. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I think that's re really well put, very well put enough anger to get past the line and get to a, uh, a place that's productive yeah for you as an individual for you as an artist but also for us as a collective uh, collective group um it's really it's really wonderful would you say uh what would you say is your favorite sound on the album it's really sonically rich and you worked with uh you worked with a member of uh, deer hoof san francisco's own uh yes. greg uh, sonier I might have still said the name too French, uh, but but yeah. Do you feel like you have a favorite uh, a favorite sound on the album? <laughs> Definitely. Which I don't know if this is my favorite, but there is a part in Threshold that sounds like a train going, uh -huh. like releasing steam, mm -hmm. and that was like I was telling Greg that I just I want that to be like so disturbing because it just wasn't coming across as disturbing. Like I was yeah. I was like banging on my guitar and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he, I don't know, he found that train sound. <laughs> it really made me laugh. But I think those are my favorite moments is every time I get to like really let out anger. There's this song called This Is The String that like I was, I recorded noises of me tapping on my keyboard. It's about like internet romance. Like, uh, and, and then eventually like I just slam on the keyboard, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh it felt so good and i love to hear it i don't know if other people will but i personally it's great yeah well <laughs> you know I, I wanted to ask uh i'm gonna ask you more about greg too i also wanted to ask about the impact of you know moving from baton rouge where you're from uh to la because mm -hmm. i know for me when i moved from a, a place where i had a house where i could turn up the music super loud to a place where i was could not do that i started listening a lot more in headphones and even as a musician and as someone that spent a lot of time listening i felt like i was hearing albums differently and i was hearing details that i just that you just don't hear you know if you're walking around a room or if you're listening you know in different environments but do you do you feel like uh, any sort of lasting impact or an impact that you have noticed in the past six or so years since you've been uh since you've been in la yeah i mean culturally is probably the biggest yeah. impact um sonically mm, sonically i've just been <laughs> even understanding uh like dissecting music in a different way than maybe i used to as as like identifying more as a consumer mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. than a um than a maker yeah but yeah culturally i just I, you know i go back to that little the like i had this very housewife idea of of who i was and um just like sweet submissive louisiana mm -hmm. you know southern lady who really wanted to please everybody and to be like beautiful and have, you know, a beautiful voice or whatever it was. And then just something cracked open in me. Like I think being around the politics, being around all these like awesome, like intersectional feminists, mm -hmm. you know, people like folks. And, uh, it made me really open up to all the 
all the things that I found oppressive about the South, which the South is a wonderful place. Yeah, you know? it but, but it very, showed yes. me. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's very different culturally. Yeah. So uh, I know that Greg mixed one of the Moon Honey albums. Um, was was some of that creative like collaboration also what brought you out here to the West Coast or? It was, well, okay, yeah, Greg has been a collaborator for a good bit of time because I I cold called him when I was Uh like 21. I just wrote him an email and he said he'd mix our album. And so, um, but he wasn't in. Yeah, Greg is the drummer in uh, the band Deerhoof. If you, if you are not, uh, if you're not awake yet or you're not sure exactly who we're talking about, but you cold called (laughs) at at 21 and, and it went from there. Yeah, we were, um, my band was obsessed with Deerhoof. So, uh, and we knew that Greg mixed their albums and we loved the way they sounded. So, um, but we actually, we went on tour, like DIY just tours probably like four or five times. And every time we went to the West coast, we just thought this is so magical, you know, riding the one down Big Sur yeah. and just being around the people. Like it just had this energy. We, we just, we were like, we have to, we have to go there. And, uh, so a bunch of our members quit cause they didn't want to move. And then me and the guitar player yeah. went to LA and it wasn't until I think we were there like four years, Greg moved to LA and then we became actual friends. That's awesome. And that's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's great. I, I love Deerhoof. And when I was listening through things, uh, before speaking with you, I, I got way off track just listening back to Apollo and all, all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really great. Yeah. It's really great. The production on these new, on these new singles. And then, uh, the, the full album comes out the 16th of April and there's a listening party, uh, today, April 2nd. How can we, how can we hear that? Yeah. So it's going to be on the joyful noise, YouTube channel, um, going live and Greg's going to be joining me and we're going to have a Q and a after we, I guess, whatever we're going to talk after we listen to the album. Um, you can find the link on my Instagram or on joyful noise. Yeah. Just cool. go to YouTube. Um, what time does that start? Oh, right. That, that is 5 PM PST. Cool. So that's 5 PM over here on the West coast and eight o'clock. If you're in Georgia, seven o'clock, if you're in Louisiana, we'll post sure. <laughs> if you're way, uh, if you're way far out there. Um, cool. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to hearing that and hearing the rest of the album. And, uh, yeah, thanks so much for spending a little bit of time chatting with us this morning. Oh, thank you. And thank you for your really thoughtful questions. Oh, it's been a pleasure. All right. We'll talk to you again soon, I hope, Jess. Thanks. Bye. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That was so much fun. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, so what's uh, what's going on after this after this release? So do you already have some more stuff? Uh, yeah. There's well, okay, so Tuesday, Tuesday I'm releasing a single. Mm-hmm. um and a music video called permanent heaven and then cool. yeah then the listening party and then the album release um and on the album release on the 16th i'm going to be um doing a like a set like a live stream cool i guess i could have mentioned that but yeah it's, uh, I, will, I definitely will i will definitely mention it i'm uh, kind of like yeah my brain sometimes can't hold lists of information sometimes it can but so i i'll bring it up of, of course. Yeah, I got all these like external hard drives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were just referring to mail as external hard drives. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that I the original. Know, the mail came like, up on the top, but the, to yeah. this. Oh, really yeah. yeah I, I feel like, <laughs> I was like I'll, I'll watch that and just the original emails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, well, cool. Cool. Yeah. I mean, loving, loving all the music and thanks for taking the time. I'm doing a, um, I'm doing a show tonight, which is why I rescheduled and it's usually a, a show, um, that's focused around, around like food and, you know, beverage hold supper sessions, but I'm going to do sandwich sessions. And so I've got a couple of people making Sonic sandwiches. So I'm going to, going to make a sandwich of your music, you know, and have a, you know, have you be the bread. Um, oh, yeah, so it'll be fun. I'll, I'll shoot Thank you the you. I'll shoot you the link for that if you're if you're bored. And uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. And I'd love to you know share it or yeah.
cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, thanks for chatting, man. I look forward to talking again and maybe, you know, one day in person when you're up here. Uh, yeah, we can do something in studio or do a live thing or whatever, you know. Oh, yeah, that'd whatever. be really Clever. fun. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and then the other thing I was going to ask, uh, you could do it now or you could do it and send it to me as like if you wanted to do a station ID for KXSF. And then you can, you know, put your spin on it if you want. But I can just shoot you a, a, a message on Instagram of the official thing, which is very basic, you know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that now if you want. Just okay. Since we're audio is like yeah, it's nice. Up here, I'll just text it into the chat for you. Okay. Mm. Okay, that's the basic thing, which I'm sure you could have surmised without my typing it, but. (laughs) No, thank you. I need the script. But if, uh, yeah, I mean, but if you want to like. Yeah, Yeah, it's a little bit of a a twist one for sure. KXSF. I always always go for it. Always make the X. (laughs) KXSF. No. KXSF. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here you uh, go. And if, uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're definitely welcome to like say something afterwards, like, or anything, anything you want, you know? <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Add your, um, you know, if you want to add your, your, your flavor to it. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I'm like, what is my flavor? Okay. The, <laughs> hmm. Let's see what happens. This is Jess Joy. And you're listening to KXSF 102.5 FM, San Francisco. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> yeah. That was great. It was like, uh, yeah, that was great. It was like the... I think I stole the CNBC uh, melody or something. <laughs> I think you, right, I no, think you no, twisted no, it just no. enough, you know. <laughs> I think NBC is NBC. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So. What what uh chord interval is that? That's like a oh yeah. I don't know. It's one of the uh, mm, that's an octave. Mm, 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 mm. It's Great. One, yeah, one eight five. Thank you for that's about the extent of my musical theory right there. For <laughs> <you>. so, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was I was real. I was real close to that melody, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. You just make two changes and then it's yours. Yeah. yeah. Can you auto tune that? <laughs> Lovely. I definitely will. I definitely will. <laughs> great. Awesome, well, Jess. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. It was so great to meet you and I'll, I'll talk to you again. Nice to meet you, Ted. All right. I'll send you that uh, recording too. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Bye. <laughs>